Hello, I'm Dr. Carpenter and I work for Lays Med Inc. As, as some of you might have heard, already know or have heard, we are offering an alternative cancer treatment that is actually not alternative at all. It's alternative only in the sense as that is an alternative of what is being used today. But it is and it should be considered standard medicine because it's an improvement over photodynamic therapy, which is already FDA approved. What we did as a change is improve the laser used, but most of all, we don't use any drugs. And that because we don't use any drugs, that's why it's considered alternative. And of course, instead of being happily accepted by everybody, it's being attacked from all directions, and we have been victim we, the corporation, and myself personally, actually, we have been victim of all sorts of attacks on the web by what are known as trolls or hate bloggers. And we have been trying to present evidence denying all of their accusations, but of course everything we do is being ridiculed and is being uh, criticized and uh, just blown away as insignificant. So we decided that something definitely drastic <laughs> needed to be done and I put out a challenge last Saturday during our radio show. And the challenge is put up or shut up. That's our conclusion about this. All the accusations are nonsense. They don't have any scientific basis. They're only hearsay and they claim that they are the only valid ones because their patient stay or relative of patient that died stating that they suffer and some died and the one that died are not saying anything obviously but their relatives are and the fact is that none of them is actually completing the fact and providing the full story of what really went on. What really went on is that this patient do not, did not follow our guideline, which are very clear, stayed every single day they come to see us, but then also stayed in, a, in written post-treatment guidelines. They didn't follow them, they went back to an oncologist, they had chemo and radiation, and some of them died because people die after chemo and radiation. That's a normal event. And it's the same amount of months that on average takes cancer patient to die with chemo and radiation. So, Nothing different. But what I claim is that none of their quote proof are actually scientific proof. So what I am here to state here is evidence that what the, ca the cancer patient experience after our treatment are normal stages of healing. And there is evidence that that's what it is. And if they follow them, they can not only survive, they already survived because we killed the cancer, but also heal and not have any reoccurrences, which is also something we are being attacked, we cannot say because it's illegal to say that there is a cure for cancer. And we state, no it's not, because there is a solution that is actually a cure because cancer does not come back unless you do things that cause cancer afterward. So, but what we want to go over is what happens after the patient gets this treatment. The tumor is dead. We prove to them that it's dead with an ultrasound that show no blood flow remaining in the tumor. They go home and they're told that, that that does not mean anything because the lump is still there. And we say the lump is, of course, it's still there, but it is dead. And you need the time for the body to flush out the dead tissue, which is just exactly like scar tissue but the establishment is not used to handle anything they haven't seen before, so what the patient get is different stories, and it's up to them to decide what makes sense to them. But we tell them, what happens when you go home is this. You will experience weeks of feeling great, the cancer is dormant, has been killed, everything is being quiet down, so you feel nothing. Then. The elements that take part of the healing are recreated by the body and they attack the dead tissue. When that happens, you have what is called a immune response. And the immune response can happen a month after the treatment when that happens is only a minor response. And then 
The really big one is that three months after the tree, and we tell them this is what happened. The area will be hot, tender, possibly red, definitely sore. You can feel stabbing um, pain. That's the, those are the nerves healing. But you can also feel throbbing pain, and that is the immune system healing process. Those are normal events. They do not mean that the cancer is growing. They are normal in the process of healing. And we also say because they involve a lot of blood flow to the area to remove the dead tissue, they could be misunderstood unless the right testing is done. And we explain that the right testing is basically an ultrasound with color Doppler, which most clinics refuse to do. They could also have a thermal scan, although it doesn't apply to all cases. In some cases they can have it, and we explain to them which cases they apply and they can have the right answer with a thermal scan. We also tell them the PET scan will not help and the MRI will not help. The CT scan with contrast can help, but of course there is the problem of all the radiation involved with the CT scan that average around the 7 millisievert in one time. And considering that the safe level is 2.4 millisievert a year, uh, having a CT scan is not a safe thing. But if people must have it, they can have that and can have the right results. However, however, the CT scan are dependent on the individual interpretation. They are not something that is absolutely objective and it can be verified by anybody. They are dependent on the interpretation of the radiologist. So they are open to questionable comments. And that's why we rarely recommend it. But the majority of oncologists, when a patient shows up, said, well, let's see, let's do a PET scan to see if the tumor is actually dead. Now, what I tell the patient is the PET scan only indicate that there is an inflammation in the area. It does not tell you in any way, shape or form that it is malignant. The assumption is that this patient had cancer, they did not do any standard treatment, so when they go and have a PET scan, obviously it's not an inflammation, obviously it's cancer, but I'm telling them it is an inflammation and it's part of the healing process. And of course, we get insulted about that and ignored. And for that reason, I want to indicate to all the members of the medical, either they forgot or they're hiding the truth. I don't know what it is, which one of the two it is, but it's one. And here it is, a book. Atlas of PET and CT scan imaging in oncology. And if you, I open it up on page 47. Now it will be probably difficult for you to read it, but we are going to show this, try to zoom in, and then we're going to show the page again, which you will be able to recognize looking at what the page looks like in the number 47. I already show the book and at the bottom tell you which book it is. And here it says, Inflammatory, in a, the inflammatory tissue exhibit increased rate of a glucose metabolism due to, and then there is the top of technical explanation. What it means is the cancer, and here it's telling you, the cancer can, will absorb the glucose and show an inflammation in the area, but also just plain on inflammatory tissue will show the same thing. You're going to see um, this page enlarge in this video, not at this time. That is one thing about the PET scan. So when they get the results that there is an inflammation, it's just an assumption of the radiologist that says it's cancer alive. He doesn't even consider or want to consider the possibility that it is just an inflammation due to the presence of that tissue, which they know would show an inflammation. But are they lying to the patient or just have forgotten? Um, I don't know. That is a question that I cannot answer. But I know that is a mistake. Then, of course, the mammogram. You do a mammogram, and the mammogram will tell you that you have 
definite activities. You might want to uh, review this, but on this book, on page 22, there is hematoma that tells you hematoma is a swelling, and the swelling will show something on the mammogram, but also fat necrosis. Now, breast cancer is mostly fatty tissue. Necrosis means dead, so dead fat tissue. And here on the book will tell you that it shows the same thing. Fibrotic reaction in a later stage produces ill-defined opacity that may simulate a carcinoma. Okay, when they say fibrotic means fibrous tissue. Now, that tissue does become stringy and fibrous. So you have that tissue in the breast or wherever else the patient has the cancer that has been killed, and it will simulate the cancer. So mammogram, PET scan, and MRI. I don't have a book at the moment for MRIs, but they do the similar thing. They tell you the blood flowing to the eye, not inside the tumor, leading to the tumor. So they are not indicating what's happening inside. They are only indicating what's happening on the outskirt. And of course, the blood has to rush to the area to remove the dead tissue. So if nothing else, all these tests, if you in the proper angle, are indicating that the cancer is dead. But says radiologists are used to interpret what they see only one way and nothing else, we're talking blinders, then it's really no reasoning with them with any other possibility. That either don't want or don't remember or they want to be right at all costs, I don't know. So we look at this problem in a different way and it said there are other things you can do to prove that the tissue is dead. One is live cell culture. We are not talking about cell culture to determine what type of uh, uh, of cancer it is, what kind of receptors are there, we are talking about live cell culture. Live cell culture, to give you a result, it takes two weeks. If nothing grows in two weeks, obviously the tissue is dead. What is the comment on that? Well, it's very difficult to grow live cell culture with cancer tissues. Very difficult. We don't do it. Okay, so I introduce, all right, another alternative is Take a sample of tissue, prepare it properly, and view it on an electron microscope. Because the electron microscope is the one that has magnification sufficient to see inside the cytoplasm of the cell. And in the video that I showed about the egg, how it's damaged, will correspond to the egg white. That's the cytoplasm. Our treatment and hyperthermia only damage the cytoplasm and leaves the nucleus intact for a long, long time. So. You can, a biopsy will only look at the nucleus, it will not look at the cytoplasm, but an electron microscope can look inside the cytoplasm that can tell you that the lungs of the cell, which they're called mitochondria, are damaged, so the cell cannot breathe. So obviously the cell is not alive, because without oxygen you do not survive. And now the nonsense of saying that cancer does, need, does not need oxygen is ridiculous, only a, some questionable alternative said that. But the fact that the mitochondria are damaged, they cannot function, that means the cell is dead. That will take about a week to prepare the sample, uh, or preserve it, and get it ready to slice it, get it ready to be on the electron microscope, and then you have to have people expert able to read it, but it takes about a week. Then there is a third way that is used in cellular biology a lot. And that can be done in the operating room. There is a doctor that removes the tumor, and only the tumor, not clean margin, just the tumor. Takes that, takes a sample of the tumor, and puts it in this particular stain that is only absorbed by that tissue. It's called trapan blue. You put it in that solution, and in three minutes, you have the answer, because only that tissue will absorb it. Uh, healthy tissue will not retain it. So, if it, it turns blue, it is dead. So my challenge was, it is your choice. Radiologists, oncologists, all the people that are criticizing us. And of course, uh, assisting uh, a hate blogger 
to attack us. You need not words of people that are paid to say so, or for whatever reason they want to hurt us. You need scientific proof of what you're saying. It does not work, prove it. And use one of these three testing that I just mentioned, which means lifestyle culture, electron microscope of stain. One of those, or all three of them, it really does not matter. But I have to be present to make sure that no funny stuff happens when it's done. And only then, if it confirms what you're saying, then you can insult me. But because I know what it will say, you cannot continue this nonsense. That's why I said this is a put up or shut up video. You either do the testing and prove your point or mine, one of the two, or you shut up, because you have no right to insult an respectable business, respectable business that helps people at a minimal cost so people can enjoy a good life and not be ruined financially and not be killed while they're being killed. You have no right to do this. So then again, you want to continue your insult while well, you can do it only after you have scientific proof that I know you won't have. But so put up or shut up. That is my stand.